All right, Shalom. one. First and foremost, as always, I want to open up by giving all the praises, honor, glory and to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who were well and preached the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom. And this is the Brent Amawan Ayash from the GMS Indianapolis camp. Uh, come back at you with another quick lesson through Spirit and Power, Yahweh Bashem Yashai. And uh, I've seen this uh, article uh, come out a, a couple days ago um, on the End Time Headlines app, which uh, now I have this uh, article put up on the uh, Newsweek app uh, today. But as you can see by the headlines, it says Turkey cuts off relations with Israel reports. And the reason why this is important because, you know, Turkey uh, plays a huge part in prophecy, you know, as Turkey is going to be one of the nations all right, right behind Russia. OK, that's going to uh, shoot missiles, OK, at America and Israel. All right, when you read Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, it talks about Gomer, you know, Misha, Tubal. OK, Turkey is a key player in this thing, man, you know. So. As a matter of fact, let me open up with this, OK, because when we see these uh, nations, OK, uh, set themselves against one another, which really is the Lord setting the nations against one another. We understand that this is a sign that the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is near. Right. So uh, we'll jump to Matthew 24 and 6. And as you can see, these are words in the red letters. This is our Lord, Yahweh Shai, speaking. It says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, right? Because ultimately, hey, these are the beginning stages of things, man. And we understand that from this point on, hey, things are going to get worse. You see, because hey, rumors of wars doesn't mean the war is, is fully broken out yet, man. Because we, we still have certain prophecies that got to come to pass. All right, for, for, hey, for main, a main example is uh, the mandatory implementation, okay, of the mark of the beast, man, according to Revelation the 13th chapter. All right, that has to come to pass. And when that comes to pass, we understand that a hey, Yahweh Shai's return is right around the corner, man. Okay? It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And are we not seeing that? The various different nations uh, against one another. You know, hey, we brought it out uh, months ago, man. Hey, Israel, Israel uh, is at war are on five fronts, man. You know? Hey, them, them, them small hats crashing out, man. You know, so hey, we in a time where the Lord is setting these nations against one another. It says, and there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. See, so these are the things that we will be seeing are right, leading up to the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, and also we understand that these things, okay, as we see these things come to pass, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. But at the same time, man, hey, hey, that lets us know. Okay, that our salvation is very near, right? So uh, let's let's jump into the article. It says the uh, president uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, which is the president of Turkey, it says announced that Turkey has officially severed relations with Israel, according to reports in Turkish media. It says news outlet uh, Medya Edge reported to have said we as a state. And government of the Republic of Turkey have cut off relations with Israel. We do not have any relationship with Israel at this point. Period. <laughs> it says Erdogan has. Excuse me. Give me one second. It says uh, Erdogan made these comments to uh, journalists aboard his plane following his recent visit to Saudi Arabia and. As Azerbaijan, Erdogan highlighted his condemnation of what he termed genocide in Gaza and Lebanon. It says he emphasized the urgent need for humanitarian aid and an immediate ceasefire. As you know, intense efforts are being made to keep the pressure on Israel alive and to take coercive measures against this country on the basis of international law. Uh, we show it. It says that he is reported to have said. It says, uh, at the time of writing the Turkish embassy in Tel Aviv, uh, 
at the, at the time of writing, the Turkish embassy in Tel Aviv is still operating, and Jerusalem has not made any official statement about Erdogan's comments. Oh, uh, let's see. It says uh, Erdogan's declaration of severing ties with Israel also comes at a time when Turkey is seeking to strengthen its relationships with other regional powers, notably Saudi Arabia and uh, Azerbaijan. It says his recent uh, visits to both countries were seen as part of an effort to recalibrate Turkey's foreign policy and enhance its influence in the Middle East and Caucasus. By distancing Turkey from Israel, Erdogan is signaling a shift toward more supportive ties with nations critical of Israeli policies. It says at the same time, the announcement, excuse me, Salakia, it says at the same time, the announcement is likely to have broader implications for the geopolitical landscape in the region, while Turkey's decision will likely reverberate through its alliances with NATO and his role in, in the ongoing Syrian conflict is that America is uh, the land of Israel's, all right, the, the Israelis, all right, a top ally, see, and Turkey currently is uh, still a part of NATO. Well, not that long ago, they applied to join BRICS, but the thing is, Turkey is, uh, I believe, the second strongest military within NATO, you see, so, hey, man, hey, when, when Turkey, when Turkey ups and leaves uh, 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 NATO, or to join Russia and the other nations. Guess what, man? Hey, that could that could uh, that that's going to uh, influence our the the other uh, nations, man, behind Turkey and NATO. You see, and we understand that all these various different nations, right? Like Revelation 17. All right, let's actually grab that. It says uh, Revelation 17 and 16. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, which the whore is who? America. It says, And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. You see? So at the AA, the Lord's going to have it to where these NATO and EU nations, man, they're going to set themselves in array, okay, against Babylon the Great, aka America, and shoot missiles all right, on America, man. All right, and we have, and, and you know, we're going to have a uh, we know we're going to have Russia all right, and its allies shoot missiles at America as well, man. Okay, which Turkey is going to be, uh, according to Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, which we'll, we'll get that later. All right, Turkey, all right, is set up to be an ally of Russia. Okay. Uh, so going on. Uh, let's see here. It says, uh, while the diplomatic break with Israel may have consequences for Turkey's relation with Western allies, including the U.S. and really specifically the U.S., because once again, you know, you, the, 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 the U.S., all right, Babylon, the great a.k.a. America, that is uh, 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 Israel's uh, main ally, really, man. It says it also reflects the increasingly assertive role that Turkey that, that Turkey is taking in shaping Middle Eastern geopolitics. <laughs> Excuse me. And you know, as you see right, right, right there, that's the end of the article. So, get real quick. Um, we'll start at the top. It says uh, Ezekiel 38 1 in the word of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai came unto me saying, It says, uh, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them, which we understand Gog is dealing with modern day Russia. And Meshach and Tubal is dealing within that area within Turkey. All right. It says, and say, thus said the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, behold, I am against the old Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. It says, now turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, 
Now I bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So, hey, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, is putting, uh, bringing back that warlike spirit right, within the Russians. And the Lord has to wear, also, the, uh, the, the uh, Lord has to wear, uh, Russia is going to be backed by a company of nations as he's going to go into some of them as we continue to read on. Right? The Lord is going to have it to where Russia is going to be backed by a company of nations. And all these nations, man, are going to set themselves in array against Babylon the Great, aka America, and shoot missiles at this place, man. Okay. Verse five it says Persia, which is modern day Iran, right? Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. <laughs> Says Gomer and his and all his bands, the house of Togrima in the north quarters, which once again, this is all dealing with Turkey. So we understand, according to prophecy, that Turkey is indeed a, a key player in prophecy. You see, and seeing okay, uh, Turkey into, uh, into uh, the Ezekiel, excuse me. And so Ezekiel, the 38th chapter being fulfilled, right? It says, uh, and many people with thee, right? Going on, it says, be thou prepared and prepare thyself and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Because at the end of the day, Russia is the vessel that the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, is going to use, okay, to lead the charge into shooting our missiles at America and Israel. Now, when we jump down, Okay, because we read about the nations that would be with Russia. You got Russia, Turkey, all right, Persia, aka Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, so on and so forth. Now, what's going to happen when they shoot the missiles, man? All right, when we jump down to verse 18, all right, it says, And this shall come to pass at the same time when Gog or Russia shall come against the land of Israel, said the Lord Yahweh by Shimei Hashai, that my fury, excuse me, that my fury shall come up in my face, which this is getting ready to happen, man. All right, the Lord is getting ready and preparing these nations, all right, Russia and these other nations, okay, to, to bring that destruction, all right, upon uh, Israel, man, okay? Uh, verse 19, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have, have I spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. What is that going into, man? The nuclear destruction, okay, that the Lord is not only bringing to America, Okay, but also upon the land of Israel. You see, so hey, once again, Turkey cutting off its relations with Israel. Guess what, man? That's another step forward into Ezekiel the 38th chapter being fulfilled. Right? This is uh, going to be the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 13 and uh, verse 4. It says, The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. It says, The Lord, Yahweh of hosts, mustereth the host of the battle. You see, so it's the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yashai, right, who's gathering are these nations to the battle, right? Real quick, let, let's see what that word uh, mustereth means. And it says, uh, it's the Hebrew word, uh, it says to attend, to muster, number, reckon, visit, punish, appoint, look after, care for. Uh, let's see what the uh, let's see what the common dictionary says first. It says muster has multiple meetings, including to gather, to enroll, or to call a duty. Now, I like the definition to gather so. Ultimately, what the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai is doing, all right, as he's setting these nations against one another, ultimately he's gathering all these nations to the battle, all right? Like Zephaniah, the third chapter tells us that he may pour upon them his indignation. As a matter of fact, let's get that. And, you know, we understand at the end of the day, right, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai is doing this for, uh, doing all this for our sakes, man. Okay, because ultimately all this is going to lead to our deliverance, right? Zephaniah. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 8, 
It says, therefore, wait ye upon me, said the Lord, Yahweh, watch me, I shine, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So, amen, it's the Lord's determination to gather the nations, all right, the armies of these nations, all right, which also the Lord, we understand the Lord is gathering them, okay, in the uh, valley. Of Yahweh Shapat, which that uh, that's located over there in the uh, Persian Gulf, all right? So the Lord, He's getting ready to gather the nations over there, all right, and pour upon them His indignation, man. All right, the Lord's getting ready to destroy the armies of the nations, all right? At the same time, He's going to deliver us, okay? Um, Joel chapter three, beginning in verse nine, it says, "Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles: Prepare a war, wake up the mighty men." Let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, which also we understand that this, uh, when it says Gentiles here, that's dealing with the actual natural Gentiles, the actual heathen nations, right? It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, which uh, plowshares, right, and pruning hooks, those are tools used for uh, farming and agriculture, All right? Now, when it says beat your plowshares into, into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, Pretty much, man, it's saying it's saying get ready for war because now is not the time for agriculture, man. All right, we're in a time of war. All right, like like it says in the what's that uh, Ecclesiastes uh, three, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Ecclesiastes uh, three. It said in uh, verse one, we we'll jump down to verse eight. It says to everything there's a season. A time to every purpose under the heaven. And then jumping down to verse 8, it says what? A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. And we in a time of war. We're not in a time of peace, man. All right, as the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yashai, is uh, uh, setting off all these plagues, man. These things are going on in the earth, man. All right, leading up to this third world war. All right. And also we understand, hey, because the Lord is about to uh, get ready to uh have all hell break loose man all right great tribulation is about to touch the earth man okay so hey man these are these are things that are happening man all right the time of jacob's trouble which the time of jacob's trouble and the, the mandatory implementation of the motb all right those go hand in hand right see because a hey, hey, like the scriptures say hey, he sh uh, esau shall be as a uh, madman not sparing none all right but persecuting those that fear the lord roughly paraphrasing all right, trying to persuade us to what take the MOTB. Hey, but Lord, will we be we build Yahweh by Shema Shai's elect? Guess what, man? The Lord, he gonna keep us in our temptation. All right, so we got Jacob's trouble and the mandatory implementation of the MOTB that go hand in hand. All right, and then what we got uh World War Three. All right, and uh, hey, ultimately, hey, the return of Yahweh Shai. Right, which also we understand that Yahweh Shai and the holy angels they're going to intervene, okay, during World War Three. All right, gather the elect. And destroy the armies of the nations, man. Okay, so hey, once again, man, we in a time of war. Going back to Joel 3 and 10, finishing off, it says, Let the weak say, I am strong. And why is that? Because ultimately, hey, these other nations are also gaining uh access to uh nuclear capabilities, which indeed is leveling the playing field are right, for this coming world war, right? It says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, which we understand that the mighty ones of the Lord are indeed the angels. All right, real quick, let's grab this. All right, in uh, Psalms, I believe it's the 103rd chapter. Yep, Psalms 103 and 20, which we're going to read the KJ, uh, KJV first. KJV translation first, and then in NLT, it says, the, it says, Bless the Lord, Yahweh by Shemi uh, ye his angels, that excel in strength, and do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now, let's change it to the NLT real quick, all right? And read the same, same verse, all right? It says, uh, Psalms 103 and 20 in the NLT. It says, praise the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, you angels, you mighty ones, right? You see that? It says what? You mighty ones, right? So when we read Joel 3 and it uh, says, uh, thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord, that's talking about the angels, man. 
All right, which a hey, who the top angel in the heavens? Our Lord Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai, when the Most High Yahweh sends back his son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, all right, Yahweh Shai, he's going to be leading the angels, all right, intervening uh, uh, war, uh, during World War III. All right, guess what? Once again, they're going to save the elect and destroy the armies of the nations. You see, so going to show you that what those mighty ones are dealing with the angels, right? It says who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. You see, uh, Joel 3 and 12. It says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which also means in the Hebrew, this would be Yahweh Shapat, which uh, Yahweh, that's the name of the most high who the world is when we call God, right? And that word Shapat is the Hebrew word for judge. So when you put it together, it literally means Yahweh's judgment, right? Which What's the Lord's judgment in this case? All right, the most high Yahweh is getting ready to gather all the nations over there in that area, which also means the valley of uh, Yahweh Shapat is over there and once again in the Persian Gulf. All right, the Lord is getting ready to gather all right, these armies into that area and pour upon them his indignation, man. Okay, you know, being the nukes, okay, and the concentrated fire laser beams coming from the chariots, man. It says, uh, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. You see, so also me, hey, we understand that hey, this coming world war, this coming battle, all right, was the scripture, you know, Revelation 16, called Armageddon in the Hebrew uh, Armageddon. Being in mountain or hill of troops, all right. This is this is the judgment of the Lord that is about to fall upon the heathen nations, man. Okay, and guess what, man? And when the Lord uh, has these nukes go off, all right, we understand that America, that the lands of America and Israel are going to be destroyed, man. Two thirds of our people are going to die in this coming destruction, and anyone on the soils of uh, of America, okay, that's not a the elect, guess what, man? They're going to be taken by this destruction, okay. So, uh, as, as a matter of fact, I'm going to close out right there. I believe the point has been made. I pray that this lesson was edifying to the body, and I pray that you got something out of this. You know, without further ado, I'd like to close out by giving all the praises, honor, glory, and to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Hakudash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who were well appreciated the truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hope you elect, and the Lord's I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, shalom.